these are the Japanese cars that we would not buy and would not recommend. Arguably the worst out there. Now, we have to put a little bit of a, an explainer in here. Mm. We are going to go through size order from small cars to larger cars. But yeah. I find that the world of cars now has become a bit like the world of music mm. where what even is a small SUV? It's very... The, the boundaries are blurred. No one really knows. It's like house music. Yeah. Like you've got acid house, vocal house, deep house, soulful house. Your mum's house. Tech house, moving house. There's all these <laughs> house music genres. And the, the, the lines are so blurred between each of them. Mm. And it's like the same thing. So I, And also... We were talking about before how the current RAV4 is larger than the original Toyota Kluger slash Highlander. Yeah, yeah. And what was the other one we were talking about? Oh, yeah, the, the, the Yaris Cross yeah. is larger than the original RAV4. RAV4. Yeah. Mm. So what's a small SUV? What's a mm. medium SUV? Mm. What's a yeah. small car? It's so all blurred. It's, it, don't roast us too much in the comments. We're going to do our best to go from small yeah. to large. The categories seem to be more confusing than ever now. So it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's hard to put a label on it. Let's start with small, small cars. All right. My first pick of the one that you would not go near with a 10-foot pole is the Mitsubishi Mirage, the 2012 to 2021. This is the 1.2-litre three-cylinder mm -hmm. with a horrifically bad CVT. Yep. I think when these were new, they were arguably the worst new car you could buy, and now they're aging on the used market. Mm. They are just horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible car. Terrible. Terrible, car. Terrible to drive. Um, yeah. To be avoided. Mitsubishi were going through some real economic challenges at mm. the time of the mm. devel development of this and you can really tell mm. just don't buy one no. do you think you're better off rather than buying something from like a 2012 to 2021 mirage you're better off buying an older yaris or yeah, definitely. mazda 2 or something oh, without a doubt yeah, yeah. for Excellent. sure Excellent. really though remember when mitsubishi mirage first came out god they're a good looking small car cool thing they were so every time i saw one, god, that is the best looking small car i've ever seen they really it was very thing. different for its time yeah and then in japan you had the performance versions mm. with the myvac running gear and all that mm. and there was mm. a one make race series here in australia mm. great looking yeah. car and then it all went horribly wrong yeah. with the this mitsubishi. generation why though mm. why uh next up I'm going to go Nissan Tita. Mm. Now, these avoid the god-awful CVT, the transmission. We'll cover that in a second. Mm. But the reason I'm adding this is it's just such a boring, yeah, oh, nothing God, car. Yeah. I have a mate that used to own one, and he's another musician, and he goes overseas mm. a lot. And he used to lend me the car when he was overseas. So I, I lived with one of these a little bit, and it was just... I don't understand why anyone would buy one. No. I don't know why he bought it. Mechanically, they're not unreliable, but they have this feature where the whole subframe is, like all the suspension is bushed and it's bolted to the subframe, but on these, the subframe is also bushed, bolted to the bottom of the car. It's like a second set of bush. I'm sure it's smoothed out all the NVH, mm. but those bushes wear out. And what happens, the whole subframe, suspension, everything moves under the car. So it just gives you this weird feeling like the whole thing is just floating and moving around wow. randomly. It's the weirdest feeling when those bushes wear out. Would terribly. you say more vague than Kate Bush? <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, next up, Honda City. Now, this is the one that is basically a sedan version of a Jazz. Yeah. Just buy a Jazz. Yeah. What's the point of this car? Aerodynamics? <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, just basically looking cool. Is it aesthetics? No. no? I think if you want to... Um, also, you want to categorise a demographic of buying this car. There, I don't think anyone under the age of 60 no. has ever bought a Nissan... A, a Nissan. A yeah. Honda City. Yeah. I'd love to talk to someone and go, how did this happen? How did you end up with this car? Mm. They, get, I know what they would say. Oh, I walked into the showroom and it was there and the colour was okay, so I bought it. Yeah. It wasn't a conscious choice. This is a car for people that have no interest in cars. They just went... Mm. Stuck I don't like walking and I don't like public transport, <laughs> but I need to get over there yeah. faster than jogging. Yeah. What should I get? I'll take that. Yeah, here's a Honda City. Yeah. Uh, horrible. I'm also going to put the Toyota Yaris and Echo sedans in there yeah. as well. Just buy the five-door hatch. Speaking of Yaris's and Echo's, uh, I'm going to call them out for their shitty paint. Okay. Now, it's not... It's not a sore point for most people. It's just aesthetics. But paint on a car is expensive. If you like good paint and you want to fix it, it will cost you a fortune. Some of the early Toyotas, the red ones and the white ones, the paint is terrible. Yeah. It's just peeling off in yeah. sheets. So if, you know, when you consider the cost of new paint, definitely a car mm. to be avoided. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised we don't see more. Because I, you, everyone's seen them driving around. You'll see a, a, an old Corolla with the paint peeling off. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. You know, I think, why don't, why don't you rat rot it? <laughs> like make it look a bit rusty and throw some chrome 
rimmed wheels on it. And I don't think anyone cares about them that, that much. Think so, yeah. Yeah. There's a Facebook group for Is dedicated really? to my white Toyota with a paint peeling off. It's called something like that. Wow, that's yep. a long it's name real. for it. For <laughs> something like that. Uh, um, let's go into small SUV. SUV. I'm going to kick off here and I'm yep. going to say the Mazda Tribute. Yep. Which, just real quick, at the time was a medium SUV, yeah. but now is very much a small SUV. Also known as the Ford Escape. Uh, and I'm going to call out especially the V6 variant. <laughs> Never has there been a, a car more thrown together with such little thought about <laughs> it coming apart. Oh, really? You, the alternator on these is a common failure point. Right. To get the alternator out, you have to pull half. It's like a six-hour job to actually... You can get it out off the engine and off its mounts in a small amount of time, but to physically get it out of the hole, it doesn't fit out any of the orifices wow. that you would normally peel, pull it out. You've got to pull half the car out to change all that, and, they, and they're weakest piece. And the engine mounts break. Um, I've got a list here. They're that bad. Um, but, yeah, the brittle... The, God, the brittle plastics. The plastics on these are the most piss-weak of all the plastics. Was this a period where it was almost the first generation of car that were using plastics instead of Definitely, yeah. Cast? Definitely early adopters of plastic. But weirdly though, the the V6 is the problem child. The four cylinder is a better car, way wow. better car. Wow. It just seems it doesn't break as often, doesn't leak oil, the engine mounts don't break. Yeah, but the car in general, to be avoided. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've got Nissan Juke. Um, now, this is going to be an unpopular opinion, but I actually quite like the looks of this. I think it's. A, yeah. I think I rate that Nissan actually took a design yeah. risk here yeah. rather than just being yet another looking yeah. you know, small crossover SUV. So yeah. I rate the looks. Um, unfortunately, the looks do impede some of the practicality. It's not. It's it's yeah. more yeah style over substance there. Yeah. Um, but the reason you should not buy one and the reason they're just terrible. Uh, CVT. Yeah. What's going on with these CVTs from Nissan? Well, that's before... Here's the thing with those CVTs. They're not bad. Okay. Well, they're bad, but they're not bad. The problem is this is, this is when manufacturers first started saying you don't need to service them. If people had serviced them from day one, mm -hmm. every 50,000 Ks, they, would know, they wouldn't have the reputation. It's the same with Subarus, to be honest with you. Yeah. A um, bit of a sidetrack. But if, if they had just had a service schedule and it, they'd made it part of the recognised routine, they would... They would have had way less failures. Yeah, it's just yeah, that's Amazing. the problem. Amazing. Mm. Um, well, actually, on Subarus, I'm going to throw in another one that you should avoid that we wouldn't buy. Mm. Subaru XV first generation. Yeah. If you've got a manual and the top trim spec, I owned one. Um, great. Although there are not negatives. Great. Better. No, not great. Yeah. They're really underpowered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the ride quality is so hard because it's basically an Impreza jacked up. Mm -hmm. Because the center of gravity is higher, you've got to then fit harder suspension or firmer suspension yeah. to stop it from pitching and rolling everywhere. So you get in an SUV thinking, oh, this is going to be comfortable with all this ground clearance. Mm -hmm. No, it's, no, it's way more uncomfortable than just a standard Impreza. But the issue is the automatics, the CVT. Yeah. Well, Again, and, and the engines, the F, that FB series engine is known for oil consumption and typically failure because they run out of oil. So, mm. that, you know, to be avoided. Yep. Mm. Um, also, Toyota CHR. Now, these are superb for reliability. Yeah. Again, I know it's an unpopular opinion here. I think that they look it's great. It's a good car. It's a good car. But you don't want to sit in the back because it feels like yeah. you've been abducted. Yeah. Um, but also, the use of space is really good. Like, it's mm. actually quite a practical car for its size. Mm -hmm. But mechanically, so underwhelming to the point that I would go nearly as far as saying it is so slow, mm -hmm. it's almost dangerous. Yeah. Yep. I think it's a gearing thing. If they'd geared it a bit lower, it right. would have been far more dynamic up to, you know, up mm. to traffic speed. No one, no one, <laughs> not a single owner of one of those is going to go over, is going to go over to 120 kilometers now, no. I would wager. No. So they could have geared it, but then again, you lose fuel economy if you're actually yeah. traveling at that speed. But I think that's part of the problem, it's just the gearing. I just remember mm. trying to pull out, the, the one we reviewed ages ago um, is a great, she's a great mate of mine. Um, I remember pulling out into, I think it was like an 80 kilometer an hour zone. It was actually after we finished filming as well, mm. which I'd been able to put it in the video. But flooring it was a, a car was doing clearly more than 80. Mm. And I'm like going, come on, come on, yeah, come yeah. on, come on. Like it, you just, mm. it's, yeah. Most people don't consider that to be a safety factor. Yeah. Like adequate acceleration to get you out of a situation. Yeah. Yeah. It can help. It's a thing. It is a thing. Mm. Uh, moving up into medium car-ish worlds, yeah. so we're kind of talking sort of Mazda 3 kind yeah, of size. Yeah, that size, yeah. Um, speaking of Mazda 3, mm. Mazda 3 diesels. Ooh. 
Oh, man. Do not buy yeah. really any Mazda with a diesel, but we'll get to that. Yeah. But Mazda 3 diesel, let's... What's this? Uh, what's going on with these engines? Um, everything. Okay. Uh, the turbos are problematic. They have a pressure sensor that fails all the time. The EGRs fail. They just they're just ter- terrible, terrible, terrible cars. Amazing. Why Mazda? Why? Well, the Why? No, the car, the car's good. Well, de- the, the diesel car, engine is bad. Yeah. The diesel yeah. engine's bad. Yeah. The heart of the yeah. the heart is the issue. Yeah. Um, such a disappointment because they. Yeah, uh, besides that, they're a great car. Yeah. Just the yep. diesel should be avoided. Um. I've got Subaru Liberty slash Legacy B4. This is the twin turbo Liberty slash Legacy. So we're going back. When is that? The 01 to 03. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, these aren't a bad car, but the twin turbo engine, massively underwhelming. Yeah. But I think below 4,000 RPM, there's just nothing going yeah. on. And incredibly, uh, unnecessarily complicated. Insane. Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Com- like, like, why? Like, uh, was it a emissions thing? Was it yes, yes, and yes. All you know, early adopters of that type of you know technology, I suppose. Yeah. You know? I wonder how much the marketing department had to do with this. Like, I'm, I'm I'm wondering if the engineers went, yeah, we could do a twin turbo, and the marketing department went, we could market a twin turbo. Yeah. Like twin turbo. Mm. That's better than mm. one turbo. Yeah. Twins that, are better yeah, than one. That's two. That's two. Yeah. Let's go that. <laughs> Um, and then the engineer's going, oh, no, 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 no. But it's like, it's going to be a nightmare. You can't like, actually build it and make it reliable. No, Too no. late now. The marketing <laughs> going, no, no, but twin, twin, yeah. two is better than one. Uh, yeah. um, I've got on my list uh, Toyota Corolla. Wow. Uh, but okay. a specific, specific one. Mm-hmm. Uh, 14 to 20 um, sedans. Mm-hmm. The ones built in Thailand. Okay. Uh, you'll know them because the VIN starts with MR or ML. There's a lot of different stuff in these compared to the Japanese built Corollas. Okay. They've got smaller wheel hubs. The wheel bearings fail prematurely. The manu- and manuals, I should also add. Wow. Um, they, the gearboxes are terrible. They, they, they have bearing issues and synchro issues, and they're just not... Oh, hell. They are f- not typical Corolla. I, I've got two customers that have got them, and they use them as Ubers, yep. and one's relatively new, and it's got all the same problems as every other old front-wheel drive... Sorry, I should say uh, sedan... Uh, Corolla. Mm, wow. Yeah, they're just different, different breed. It's funny because when we've done like Rav Four, really, any time we do Toyotas on the channel, mm. it's interesting because we're pretty fortunate in Australia. Most of our Toyotas come out of Japan, and mm. you generally find that the Japanese-made ones have far less issues than other countries. For example, a lot <coughs> of, I think it was the Rav Four, the North American-made ones can mm. have some weird issues, and yeah. then there's ones that are made. Uh, the Russian-made ones for the European market mm. can have some issues. It's interesting. You'd think there'd be a real consistency in build quality between factories, but sometimes it's not. also components. There are different components under the, the drive shafts are different. Yeah, As well. I said, the wheel hubs are different, and they're just different. I don't know yeah, if they're well. using old stock or what. Yeah, but and I'm sure a, a bulk of the bulk of them probably ended up in Thailand. Yeah. Um, you know, just being used as dailies or whatever, but the ones that got exported and imported to Australia are just terrible. All right, mm. cool. All right, avoid them. Um, I've also got the, this is a bit old school, this is 1992 to 97 and then 1997 to 2002 Mazda 626, yeah. also called the Capella in yeah. Japan and also known as the Ford Telstar. Mm. Just yeah. shoddy old thing. Shoddy old thing. There's yeah. no, like, there's hardly any out there, so there's not, mm. n- no real need to elaborate, but just no. don't, just don't do it. Weirdly, but they do have their fan base. Are they collectibles? No, no, I don't think um, so. I'm just going to also add on Toyotas from that time period. Uh, th- again, the paint. Yeah, yeah. Again, the paint. Classic, yeah, classic for the white peeling paint. Yeah, terrible. Um, mm. Moving up into medium SUVs. Before we do, oh, I'm sorry. just going to bring up the uh, Honda Civic models with the 1.5 turbo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the oil, oil dilution issue. Okay. It's a big thing. Uh, check your oil all the time if you have one. Better still, don't have one. Is, does this also go for, was it the Honda HRV yeah, in the small SUV category? Yeah, 1.5 turbo. Not a bad engine per se, but they just have all these oil dilution and oil consumption issues as well. Okay, so keep an eye on the oil Yeah, levels. don't miss your services. Okay. It's time for another Wiper Tech Challenge. Will it wipe today's victim? High protein cottage cheese. Now, before we see how these wipe, remember WiperTech wiper blades are super easy to order online. They're an absolute breeze to fit. And if you order them via the link, you're gonna get 15% off and free express shipping. Let's see how they go. Okay, high protein cottage cheese, here we go. Go for it. That's pretty good. That's done, that's a good job. 
So if Wipertech blades can handle that, surely they can handle anything that you're going to throw at them. Get yourself a set today. Okay, medium, medium okay. SUVs. Uh, it's a repeat of the Mazda 3 here. Yeah. Mazda CX-5 diesel. Yeah. Don't go near it. Just yeah. avoid it at all costs. Yeah. yeah, there are owners out there that are claiming they've got no dramas and whatnot. It's not true. Yet. Um, I, I still just don't see the point of even risking it because it doesn't offer you anything no. better than what the petrol engine offers. Yeah. They are... They are all the Subaru diesels are just utter junk. Mazda's. I'm oh, sorry, Mazda diesels. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry. Uh, I, I'm skipping ahead. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was looking at my next on my list of Subarus with a diesel. Well, yeah, okay. So yeah. we're talking yeah. Foresters, mm. uh, EJ20, EJ25s, but yeah. then that's the petrol engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then obviously diesels in those yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly right. So, yeah, do you want to go, shall I rant about the you diesels go. now? The diesel now, it. everything diesel, they're terrible. They, they split intake hoses, the map sensors clog up, they have chronic DPF issues, they're just absolute donkey. How, yeah. how is it that Subaru and also Mazda, mm. why can't they get diesel right? I don't know. I don't know. They, I think they just wanted some skin in the diesel game. Yeah. And of course, they've ditched them all now. So, terrible, yeah. terrible idea. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to get banned from every vape shop uh, in the area. I'm just going to put a whole bunch of these Subarus together. As you said, the EJ20, EJ25, um, they're just terrible motors, really. They're okay in, you know, in, if they've been built. But the oil leaks and, yeah. and the coolant leaks and the fact that they're the most expensive JDM car to service yeah. out of everything, the most. Yeah. They surpass Euro stuff. They are just ridiculously expensive. The timing belts every 1200K, every 120,000 Ks. The service schedule is expensive. It, like, it's just ridiculous. Is it? And, yeah, and you can't miss the servicing. God, I no. remember this, what was the one where we were saying, uh, it's from another video where we were talking about a lot of people will sell it at a certain kilometre range because you look at the bill that's yeah. coming in for a yeah, major yeah, yeah, service yeah, yeah. and you're yeah. like, I'm better off selling this car and buying something yeah, else. Yeah, the, the first of timing belt on these things is often in the honeymoon period, but the amount of people we see that have just bought it and it's got about 200,000 Ks on it, that is why. The previous owner's gone, I'm not putting, yeah. I'm not spending thousands of dollars on servicing and timing belts. I'm just going to get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. So just be careful. If you look, mm. you probably shouldn't buy one, but like if you are looking at buying one, just... Be aware. Yeah. Servicing costs, keeping the thing on the road. Yeah, it's a yeah. terrible design. But you know what, what's annoying? It's it's one of the best all-wheel drive systems out there. Because like I've I've had times where I'm like, okay, you know, I want to go mountain biking, I want to go snowboarding or whatnot. Be good to have an all-wheel drive car. Yeah. And they are such a great, like, They're pretty capable. Sy symmetrical yeah. all-wheel drive yeah. systems, fantastic. It's like all the positives of all-wheel drive with none mm. of the negatives of like a proper four-wheel drive. Yeah. But then there's these issues. Yeah. So frustrating. Mm. Um, I've got Honda CRV, the third and fourth generation. So that's mm. 2006 to about 2021. Yeah. Now, these are really reliable with the 2.4 litre uh, engine, which is the mm. classic K24. Yep. Um, the ones with the 1.5, as we just said, oil dilution can be an issue. Yep. But the only reason I've got that I wouldn't buy one of these is they're just so boring. <laughs> they're so boring to yeah. drive. Yeah. Uh, again, it's just... It's like Honda took all of the fun and enjoyment out of being a Honda out of these mm. cars. Honda can do fun and enjoyment. Yeah. Why don't they just stick with what they know? Yeah. Mm. Also, like the second gen is a little nugget. Like mm. it's like I used to own one. Great yeah. little thing. Yeah. But this, the third and fourth gen, just yeah. Yeah. stay away. Yeah. Um, the next one on my list is sorry. Sorry. Not unreliable. No. If you want a reliable SUV. And you don't care about driving. Yeah. Great car. Yeah. But if you like driving, don't buy one. I'm going to uh, chime in here and say the early Mazda CX-7s. I think it fits in this category. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, it's the 2.3 litre turbos. Oh, my God. Uh, timing chain, timing chain gear issues, oil leaks, uh, <laughs> melted pistons because they have, you know, air fuel ratio complications, EGR complications. The transfer case fails, and people don't know the transfer case has failed. This is in the all-wheel drive models until they, you accelerate and you get loss of traction. And when you would normally engage the rear, the coupling might be coupling, but the transfer case isn't transferring. Wow. So people are driving around in two-wheel drive forever and not even knowing it's failed. Amazing. Seen it a bunch of times, yeah. Is that, so this is, is that the same running gear as the Mazda 6 MPS? Oh, I can't say for sure. It'd be similar. But the thing is, with a Mazda 6 MPS, you're generally having a car bought by enthusiasts mm. who are going to be all over maintenance and looking after yeah. it and tinkering with it. Uh, Whereas it's with a young... Yeah. Um, not always, but you'd <clears throat> yeah. like to think of that. Mm. But then with the CX-7, I don't know how many enthusiasts yeah, are buying a CX-7. I don't know if they're the same, to be honest. They probably are, uh, but I've never seen one... I've never seen that go unnoticed in an MPS. Yeah. Um, 
in fact, I think I have been aware of them failing in an MPS, but people know it because they, yeah. you know, it's a performance-ish car. Uh, but a CX-7, people don't know. We've got to get a CX-7 on the channel. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Yeah. We've, there's been a bunch of requests. Mm. Um, are the later ones a bit better reliability wise or not yeah, really? the later ones are a bit better okay yeah, yeah. Um, I've also got the Nissan Nissan mm. it's like Nissan mm. Nissan Dualis and Qashqai oh. especially the 2 plus 2 yeah again CVT mm. most of them haven't been serviced yeah. so most of them are going to have problems but my biggest issue with this it's just a shit car the, I, I, yeah. I like I've got dear friends that own one of these and they're kind of mm. Nissan fans and I don't get it I just think it's just a an yeah. underwhelming car. It doesn't do anything great. The two plus two. Everything made of plastics just breaks. Yeah. Like the tailgate handle, they just snap off when you open yep. the tailgate. It's In terrible. Interior trim. Yeah. Just gets mm. rattling and mm. terrible. It feels mm. cheap and nasty. Yeah. Doesn't drive very well. <laughs> I don't. I just don't get it. I don't. There's just so many other cars in that yeah. sector that you should buy. Which we mentioned on the Japanese cars that we would mm. we would buy. Mm. Um, yeah, don't go near that. And then obviously the CVT. Yeah. yeah. Problem Same child. thing. Same mm. thing. All right, we're going to go into large car now. Yes. Uh, I've got Toyota Camry. Yep. And Rav Four, but a specific RAV4 model. Rav Four in car. What are you doing? Well, oh, sorry. It's, well, I should. Sorry. Oh I'm going somewhere God. with this. The Camry, but okay. I'm going to go with the two AZFE, which is also in the in the. Rav. Okay. Sorry. That engine is to be avoided. Um, That's the two point four liter. The 06 to thirteen two AZFE, oil consumption. Okay. Big problem. Okay. Big problem. Is there a solution to it? Yeah, don't own one. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, some have been re rebuilt under warranty, um, but that ship has well and truly sailed. Uh -huh. um, no, just top it up. Okay. What's it, it doing? Where's it? Where's uh, it just, it's just, just I think it's piston and ring design. Okay. I think it's all coming past the rings from, from my memory. Um, well, most people don't worry about it. Just top up the oil. But I would suggest maybe don't buy one. Okay. Mm. Amazing. Mm. Um, what I should also mention they don't all do it. Not all of them. Some of them. Wow. Yeah. Oh, good. It's a thing. Mm. Um, again, no surprise here. I have Mazda 6 diesel. Yeah, I've Mazda got 6 too. is maybe one of the most underrated cars mm. on the market, especially in wagon form, but yeah. just don't get a diesel. Yeah. That's the 06 to 2019. Yeah. I knew someone recently who had a Mazda 6 diesel, mm -hmm. had all of the problems that we've talked about. They love the car so much that they sold the Mazda 6 diesel and bought a Mazda 6 petrol. They Brilliant. simply replaced it with the petrol version. Brilliant. And now they're happy and Brilliant. their lives are better. Great. And I think their marriage might even make it. Oh, really? Yeah. Thank goodness. Yep. Scary. This is why Redriven exists, is to mm. save marriages yep. because yep. cars breaking down can ruin a relationship. Yeah. 100%. I know from experience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Nissan Altima, 2013 to 2020, again, CVT. Yeah. Also, why? In what region were they popular? They're, you know what? They're really big. In New York and Brooklyn, actually, in Brooklyn, you see Ultimate. <laughs> just that suburb, just that. Just Brooklyn. City. No, I was I was amazed that that's the thing that shocked me most about the car scene in New York and Brooklyn was just how many Ultimas or just front wheel drive large cars. Oh yeah, Honda Accords yeah. Um, or TSXs, I think they're, they're okay. called over there. Mm -hmm. But the Nissan Ultima, everywhere, wow. lowered big wheels banging tunes and it's like wow that is it's such an underwhelming car and even modified eh. yeah but i can't think of the last time i had one in the workshop yeah i honestly if maybe if ever yeah really i yeah yeah i don't i don't i just don't understand why you'd ever buy one yeah if you own an ultima why yeah. please let us know in the comments maybe they inherited off a late deceased elderly person Maybe, yeah. yeah. If you've got one for free, you should sell it and buy a good car. Yeah. Now, if you're looking to buy a car, even if it is one you probably should avoid, and if you're looking for finance, click the driver link below. Yeah, driver is going to find you the very best finance packages from loads of different lenders. Applying online is so easy and completely free. It's going to have no impact on your credit score, and you can get the cash in no time. Hit that driver link below. Um, let's go large SUVs slash four-wheel drives. Uh, I'm going to go the early CX-9, so 07 to 2010 yeah. the, with the 3.7 litre. Yeah. I want to elaborate yeah. on this. Uh, mechanically, not that good. Yep. Um, similar problems to the CX-7 also. Yeah. Yep. yeah not, not that great. Not terrible, but in that sector, there are better cars. Sure. Yeah. Uh, this one, I again, this could be a rant warning. Nissan Pathfinder, oh, yeah. the R52. So that's the 2012 to 2020. Mm. Why? Yeah. This is a car, I had one of these as a press car mm. when it was new, yeah. and even new, I thought, anyone that buys this, just, we're too lazy to go and test yeah. drive any other car. 
It is terrible. Yeah. It's a terrible, terrible car. Yeah. It's also, it's not just terrible in terms of build quality and reliability. Mm. Even when new, it felt old. Yeah. It's underwhelming. Technically, it's not Japanese. These are built in the United States. Yeah. The V6 is a bit of a donkey. Timing chain issues. Uh, fun fact, you can get a hybrid in really? these. Yeah. Uh, okay. there's, there's not many around, which is exactly the reason why you should never buy one because yeah. you'll never get parts for it. But yeah, they do exist. I mm. see them on the road all the time and just think, why, why, yeah. why did like, surely they buy them cheap at auctions. Yeah, man, they are, they're yeah. just a dog yeah. of a car. Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually, I'm looking forward to getting one on the channel just so I can tear it to shreds. Yeah. But as I said, brand, even brand new, it had, I think it, it had like 13 kilometers mm. on it. Mm. And I remember just going, God, this is horrible. This yeah. is a shit car. Even the brand new ones are based on the old platform. Is it really? Yeah. They must have come a long way, surely. Mm. It wouldn't uh, be hard to improve on it. Haven't had a good look at them, but yeah, they're not that good. I've got a very controversial pick oh, on yeah. my large SUVs. We discussed this earlier. Large SUVs and four-wheel drive category. Um, come at me with, with your pitchforks if you want, but I'm going to go 200 series Land Cruiser. Look, they're a great car, but I wouldn't buy one. Uh -huh. um, how am I going to say this? They're, they're known problems, like some turbo issues, the engine dusting issues, like the air filter is terrible. Um, they're, they're, I just think there are better options. Okay. I, I would probably go a patrol. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just, yeah. Um, I think when we, did the, when we did the Y62 video, I think we did the sum. So if you look at... If you look at it, like, we're, we're talking Y62 money. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So that, you know, near $100,000 range. Yeah. But a y, you can get a, low, a much lower kilometre Y62 patrol. Um, equivalent will be a very high kilometre 200 series. Mm. But then when you look at the price difference, like, yeah, the patrol's going to use a lot, a lot more fuel. But then the pricing difference as far yeah. as equivalent kilometres and age. Yeah. A, a, a and also the price of diesel now is... Yeah, yeah. But a 200 series is going to be... Ten, fifteen, twenty thousand yeah. dollars more than the mm. patrol mm. for equivalent year yeah. model and um, like condition and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get way like that's a lot of kilometres mm. when you're saving twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the patrol has its issues as well. Oh you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, Suspension yeah, yeah. issues and yep. wobbling complications. But I just think that the, the the price of the two hundred series and the list of known issues like oil consumption and t and injector issues, they the inlets choke up terribly on them. Mm. Um, I just, I just, unless you have to have one for towing, I don't know. I don't, I don't. I still think my answer, and we've said this in the other, in the, in the cars we would buy, mm. I just think Pajero. Yeah. Let's I see. think Pajero. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't got the horsepower of no, no, something no, like the like 200 yeah. series, but I, I think overall reliability, yeah. It's yeah, Pajero. I just love a Pajero. I'm going to go so far as to say, if I had to tow something really big mm. that required a 300 series, 200 series. Uh, sorry, 200 series. Oh, 300 series is good. I like that. I have a yeah, 300 yeah, series. Yeah. Uh, I would probably buy something American. Really? Yeah. If I had only... Look, stupid. Okay. Unnecessary car. But if I have to tow something... Yeah, like big weight. Big weight, like a big trailer. And that's the only reason I have a 200 series. Yep. I'm probably going to get a Ram or something. I've got friends of mine just bought uh, an F-150. Mm. Uh, 2021 model, I think yeah. it was. Um, and it is, and they were they were looking at a at a two hundred series, maybe three hundred series. But then mm. they, they did they did all of the um, fact finding and research. Mm. So they're towing horses. Mm -hmm. The the girl and the couple um, competes in equestrian yep, events. Yeah. The guy and the couple is a tradie, mm -hmm. and a lot of the work is far away. So he needs to fit three other tradies in it comfortably. All the tools, all the gear. Then on weekends, tow the horses. Yep. Do all that sort of stuff. Totally good list of reasons to have that car. Yeah. Mm. We went to the snow in it and, mm. and I was like, this is so impressive. Mm. This is great. So, yeah, yeah okay. That's a, yeah. yeah. I think it's, I th I'd go there. Okay. All right. Um, the one I've got in large is the Nissan, Nissan, sorry, is the Subaru Tribeca. But oh. the first in the 05 to 07, possibly not a bad car, but it is... The most hideous looking design. I remember when they came out and they what were ugly they? from day one. And you know, when an ugly car comes out, you warm to it. You no. think, oh, over the years, you know, oh, no. actually, I didn't like them when they first came out, but I like them now. This is not a Tribeca. No. I, I don't, I never warm to a Tribeca. I see them now, they look just as ridiculous as they did. It's like Subaru went, all right, how ugly can we make a car before yeah. people stop buying it? Well, there's your answer. Yeah. Um, Cal's going to do us a little bit of uh, editing magic because I've fixed the Tribeca. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I spent some time on Photoshop. Yep, yep. So here's what the Tribeca looks like mm. before in standard form. Ugly. And, and here's how you fix it. Mm. 
Looks good. There we go. Yeah. You just turn it into an Alfa Romeo yeah. and suddenly it looks cool. Um, performance cars. Oh. Japanese performance cars that mm. we would not go near with a 10-foot mm. pole. Yep. What do you got? I think I had to get a bit nitpicky here. Now, controversial okay. first choice. I've got the 86 oh, yeah. or BRZ. I disagree. Uh, I don't, I don't, I well, just... no, no. Great car, great track car, okay. good, good, good all-rounder, but you, this oil pickup problem and the silicon inside the engine issue they're having... Mm. It's a real thing. Like, it happens to so many of them. Okay. That's the only reason. Okay. Like, it, 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 I don't know why a modern engine manufacturer is still doing this. How is this a thing? Like, fix your robots. Yeah. So they don't put too much sealant in there. If you're going to have one, fine. Pull the sump off and fix the oil, fix the silicon, you know, sealant issue. And then it's a good car and then I'd have one. But yeah. that's, that's one of the reasons why I wouldn't buy one. How hard is it to do that? Not that hard. There you go. Yeah, but most people don't know it's there. Mm. You know, drive it, they own it, they track it once and the engine's dead. Yeah, wow. Mm. Okay. Um, I think we both agree on this next one. Mazda RX-8. No, I can't believe that's on your list. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah. is like, they're just, there's such an underwhelming car unless you're going nine to ten tenths on a track and you can feel the chassis balance. Yeah. But just buy anything else. Nine so to ten tenths on a track will kill it unless <laughs> everything RX-8 has been taken out of it. Yeah. You know, that's, you can fix them, but you've got to spend a fortune on it. If it's stock, never been modified, it's going to break down. I just, yeah, it's all too complex. It's all too... It's, it, that's if you can get it started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just, again, I, I don't understand why anyone would buy this. I just, the lack yeah. of torque is, is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I just, yes, it revs really hard, but then you look like a knob driving everywhere, revving yeah, it everywhere. No. Okay. I don't think they're attractive either. No. I, know I I'd often talk about aesthetics, and but it's not a good looking car. I don't it could think have been. I don't think it's aged well. No. I, think it, I think it looks old. Yeah. It looks old and tired. Yeah. It's, um... Yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I'm so underwhelmed. I really mm. wanted to love it too when we filmed yeah, it. Yeah. And granted, the one we had was pretty bloody tired. Oh, yeah. Um, but even then, I just, ugh, yeah. Put an LS in it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Case swap it. Case swap mm. it. There you go. Mm. Um, I've got Toyota Paseo because, as one magazine put it, it's a sheep in sheep's clothing. <laughs> I love that um, description. So it's, good. Not a, it's not even, it, yeah. I, I, so, it somehow falls into the performance car category and it yeah. shouldn't because it's just not a performance car. Yeah. It's just such a vanilla yeah. blancmange of underwhelmingness. <laughs> My next one's a good car, but I still wouldn't buy one. Uh, 350Z. The early ones with the gallery, gallery gasket issue uh, yeah. and the oil pressure complications. Again, you can buy it and you can fix it, but you've got to take the whole timing cover off and do the timing chain and everything. Yeah. Um, it's just a bit of a ticking time bomb if you're not aware of it, so probably mm. to be avoided. The flip side, but I would love to buy an early one, fix those problems and do an overland build. That would be cool. I think a 350Z yeah, jacked cool. up with all terrains is yeah. a cool looking thing. Can I put an LS in it? Of course you can put yeah, an LS in it. Yeah, let's do that. Yep, done. Mm. Um, my next one is the Subaru Impreza WRX 2000 to 2010. This is the narrow body one, both in sedan and hatch. Um, firstly, this is talk about this is this is proof that pumping out the guards and arches fixes all problems because when you look at the after 2010 and they went the wider STI body shell, yep. um, instantly looked a million yep. times better. Yep. But my issue with this car, there's a bunch of issues. Mm. It's, I think the, the first WRX that was really targeted at the American market, mm -hmm. so my apologies to our North American viewers, but mm -hmm. that means it's just very soft all over. Yeah. It, 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 it lost all response. The yeah. steering's a bit soggy. The handling and suspension's all a bit... Meh. I think that's, that's about the time when the WRX, in, not in the STI, the WRX, I think that's when it lost its way as a, as a sports performance car. Yeah. That's just... They just yeah. yeah. I... Um, the other issue is it's the 2.5 litre mm. for the Australian market ones, and that they were a nightmare. That was that was right at the time of the 2.5s yeah. so having all sorts of dramas. Yeah. Um, I just just yeah, and they're yeah. cheap. They're super cheap on the used market, yeah. but I just wouldn't bother. There's better better options. Honestly, if you're looking at it, if you're looking at it, no, I'm, go watch the the Japanese cars. We would recommend because we cover the stuff yeah, you should yeah. buy yeah. instead of this. Uh, another one, uh, and this hurts me to say because normally this brand's. It's funny. I'm just going to say this brand. Before we started Redriven, I had no interest in it. I had no, like, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Mm. And since doing all the research we've done over the last few years, I've, I've grown to really like this brand. It's right. Lexus. Oh. But the SC430, oh. what the hell were they thinking there? Oh, is there an uglier car? I don't think so. Oh, uh, Tribeca? No. Wow. Okay, SC430 well, the, is... The, the okay. Tribeca is cheap and 
you know, what's the word I'm looking for? No one really cares about it. But this is a luxury sports yeah what, thing. Is it coupe? It's a, it's a two it's a two door <coughs> convertible coupe. Did they make a hard thing. top? Well, it's kind of a hard top. It's like a folding oh, hard yeah, top. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they also make a soft top. I'm sure I've seen a soft top version. I have to have a look. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. But it's no. It would be no better looking. Mm. Something about the wheel choice that from yeah. the factory wheels. Well, like, what? But then you see them with aftermarket wheels, and they still look they're still like terrible. Them, but they're way better. But there's something about that styling of that car that they missed terribly. And were they popular in any? Were they popular in America? I think they're popular with over 55s. Maybe. Um, it's funny because I feel like it's one of those things. Like when you when you look at the specs on paper, it should be a cracking. Oh. Car. Yeah. It's a 4.3 litre naturally aspirated V8 driving mm. the rear wheels mm. in a two-door yep. smallish coupe yeah. slash convertible body. That should tick. Sounds good. Yeah, but yeah. it's not. No. Um, rear wheel drive. Rear wheel mm. drive. Yeah. But just such an underwhelm. I'm sure. You know, I'm sure the build quality is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure they're super reliable. I know Graham Norton used to own one. <laughs> um, of course he did. Um, he actually said, I love Graham Norton, and he said that because he went from a SC430 to a 911, mm. and he he reckons the SC430 was the better car. Yeah, I'll be more, and, more um, comfortable yeah. to live with it as a daily, I would imagine. But And, and also, like, I love Graham Norton, but I, I wouldn't put him at the top of my list of, um, <laughs> of automotive journalists. <laughs> no, um, not, not an automotive influencer, no. I would not say, yeah. So, yeah, SC430, meh. Yeah. Um, my last one for performance cars. Yeah. I think. Let me just double check. Yes. Um, is the new Honda NSX. Oh, the more recent yeah. Honda NSX. Had a diluted dream, really. <laughs> it could have been great. It's, it, not, it's not bad. Oh, it's an amazing car. Yeah. Here's the thing. I think, number one, it's not Japanese. It's American. It's American designed. It's American mm. manufactured. It's mm. all Acura or Honda yep. USA. The problem here is that the people that have this sort of money mm. and love Japanese stuff, yep. well, this is not Japanese enough for them to go gaga over. Yeah. But the American people that have this sort of money, well, if you're going to spend that money, you just buy a Corvette. Yeah. Um, so what's the, the point? That the really NSX? sort of you know tickles you in the spot you need to be tickled in. This this, this car, the, that Honda, gets criticised for the same thing the original one did when it came out as being too nice to drive, too comfortable, mm. not you know not enough emotion, and too nice, too. Too yeah. Japanese. Yeah, it keeps too many people happy. But, you know, exactly. But talking about being tickled in the right spots, mm. I think they Honda made the, the same mistake that Mercedes AMG are making now with the new C63. Mm. They focused so heavily on just sheer performance oh, and what God. this thing's capable of in, yep. in lap times and acceleration times yeah. that you miss out on what makes the car special and, and, and tickles yeah. your fancy yeah. to drive. The new C63, the four-cylinder one, yeah, it's unbelievably fast surgically precise and they're and not fast, selling they're no they're not selling at not all not a visceral car no 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 I, what they should have done what the nsx should have been should have been the stop gap between the civic type r and the s2000 so imagine this mm. imagine lotus amira style kind of car so mm. therefore it's up against porsche That's the nsx element of it yeah it's yep. the it's up against the porsche cayman yep. and boxster mm. you you give it the two liter turbo out of the civic type r mid-engined rear wheel yep. drive yeah it works because that engine's a cracking yep. thing yep. The civic type r is renowned for being one of the greatest front wheel drive cars yep. of all time but you put it in mid-engine rear wheel mid drive platform yep. you make it that like a modern day mr2 Perfect, mm. perfect. Mm. Make the make the NSX. You, you take and also styling wise, give it some retro vibe. Give it a few, I don't know, a few uh, like cue points of the original NSX yep. into yep. the design. Yep. I just think the new one looks. It looks American. Yeah. It should look Japanese. Yeah. It really annoys me because I love I love Honda mm. as a brand, mm. especially their performance cars. Yeah. The NSX is still probably my all time Halo car, and the new one just yeah. what a shame. Like hybrid, it's, there's no manual option. Yeah. Get, get rid of the hybrid system. Just give it a two liter turbo with the manual gearbox and, mm. and the option of a dual clutch or an auto. Yeah. In well, something they'd probably the sell a few of those if they were affordable. Well, yeah. I sold a stack of them. Yeah. Um, anything else in there? That's, that's all I got on my list. Uh, I, yeah. That's all I got. There we go. They're the Japanese mm. cars that we just. Just sorry, the NSX thing just annoys me so much. I don't know what they were thinking. Now you are so in love with the, the old NSX as well. You know, you, you had you had high hopes for a new NSX. Yeah, so I remember. It's, when it, like it's the, affecting you more than most. Yeah, when there were you know when it was years ago, and it was like, oh, there's a new one coming. I'm like, oh, this is yeah. going to be fantastic. Yeah. This is going to be great. Imagine if it's like a Lotus Exige. Mm. No, it was the no. complete opposite. That's I'm sure great. it's brutally fast mm. and, and amazing to drive, but I just. Yeah. 
it just doesn't. Again, it's on the list because there are way better options. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you guys think? What mm. are the Japanese cars that you wouldn't buy, wouldn't go near, wouldn't recommend? Yeah, and tell us your horror stories as well. You know, a car that you bought thinking because it's Japanese it's going to be great. Well, let's, you know, let's let's hear about it. Yeah, mm. uh, we'll see. Oh, also, if you've got any other ideas for these sort of mm. chat, podcasty kind of style videos, mm. let us know as well. Um, we'll see you guys next time.